Hello, hello, and welcome to our latest Oprah Daily Insiders Roundtable. I'm really, really excited about this one because it's about dating. What we like to do is have deep conversations with thought leaders and change makers about topics that we hope it's Oprah's mantra to help you live your best life. There are a million dating apps out there. I'm scared to try, but there are a million. It's hard to keep up. And COVID has made things, how shall we say, a little more complicated. So if you're single, how are you supposed to find the right person? That's really what I want to talk about today. Oprah said to me once, you're never going to find anybody, Gail. Look at your shoes. Look at your coat. Look at your bag. I know. Isn't that funny, guys? I go, well, what's that supposed to mean? A guy's going to look at you. I'll never forget. I was standing in her office. This was in Chicago. This was over 10 years ago. She, she said, a guy's going to look at you and say, there's nothing I can do for her. Guys want to feel that they can do something for, for the person they're dating. And I said, I don't want, I'm not looking for a guy who can do something for me. I'm looking for a guy who compliments me. So put a pin in that for a second. Mm -hmm. So how do you find that in today's world to talk about this? We're turning to some friends who we think have some excellent insights about this and how people can find the love we're looking for. First up, talking about you, Drew Barrymore, as you all know, Drew, credible actress, entrepreneur. Here at Oprah Daily, we love her beauty line. It's called Flower Beauty. You are, Drew, such a flower. She's also the host of the Drew Barrymore Show and the mom to two lovely, adorable girls. And by the way, she's single. Next, we have another incredible single lady. Hey, Tasha Adams. If Tasha looks familiar to you, that I'm not surprised. She's co-host on The Bachelorette. But before her hosting duties, she appeared as The Bachelorette during the show's 16th season. Can't wait to hear, Tasha your thoughts on dating. Matthew Hussey is also joining us. Matthew is a dating expert who has helped millions of women find love. And guess what? Matthew has love too. <laughs> Yay! Yay! He has the number one YouTube channel for dating advice, and he's the author of the best-selling book, Get the Guy. Matthew, it's really good to see you. Matthew, I used to watch you, a true story, on ET. You would always do Thursday. And I would sit there with a note thinking, what is Matthew going to say? Drew, do you know this, this little feature that Thursday? I'm, absolutely. I know it well. Uh, I it. And I, he, okay. Matthew is brilliant. I know. I would sit and take notes because you used to say, flirt and go on shorter dates. I go, I can do that. Or say yes to all invites. I really do like that. And last, but certainly not least, we have Logan Yuri. Logan is a behavioral scientist turned dating coach. She's the author of, look at the title of this book. I love the book and look at the cover. She's the <laughs> author of How Not to Die Alone. <laughs> I got this title and said, I want this book. She's a director of relationship science at the dating app Hinge. I loved everything about your book. As you see, Logan, you remember I took lots of notes. I loved it. Back cover. So the toothbrushes are apart. And then at the end, there's a happy ending to the story. So I want to start, Logan, with you, actually, because something you said very early on resonated with me or fascinated me. You said love is, is natural, but dating is not, and dating is hard. Why is dating so hard? Yeah, there's a few things there. So one is that we're born knowing how to love. Anyone who's had a kid knows that, but we're not born knowing how to date. And dating is a really new skill. It's a really new thing in the span of human history. Dating started around 1890 and the dating apps were only about 10 years old. So if you feel like you're bad at this or we're all struggling, that's because it's really new. So that's natural. And then why is dating so hard right now? One of the reasons is that we just have so many options. There's a lot of research that shows that when you have too many options, you doubt yourself. It makes it harder to make a decision. Even when you make a decision, you regret it. And so we have this overwhelming sense of choice. We also have people telling us, this is the most important decision you'll ever make. So that stresses us out. And then really, we're just at this interesting point in history where we're writing our own stories. So in the past, you would have your religion, your diet, your daily activities determined by the society you lived in. And now it's really up to you. And that freedom is great. But it's also really stressful because if you don't like your life, there's a feeling of, oh, I must be the one to blame. Okay, so I like this. So it's really up to you, Drew. So picking up on what Logan said, do you think dating is hard? You are Drew Barrymore. You are a household <laughs> name. You walk down the street, people know your name. Do you think it's hard? 
I never think when I walk down the street, I'm anybody. I'm just <laughs> another girl who is just as much of a romantic um, as everybody else. One of the reasons why I've been following what Matthew speaks of is because I am obsessed with behavior mm. and whether it's my past behavior, I love the saying, trust patterns, not apologies. What patterns have I had? What things have I conquered and overcome? What did I used to accept? I have definitely been a hedonistic love junkie who <laughs> probably thrives on drama and um, <laughs> didn't think um, too much. I also understand, so I, I get that behavior and I get the carefreeness and the joie de vivre of it. I also understand the evolutionary pull a woman feels to further the human race and how we look at a man and we have a ticking clock and a, a responsibility. So, so there's Drew, that. Do, do, do you say all that to say you think it's hard or you think it's not so hard? Um, well, now I'm in the phase of I'm looking at it as a woman who has kids and isn't looking to get married. So I feel like I've looked at dating through several lenses yeah, yeah, and, and different times of life. So I think that dating differs depending on where you're at and what you're looking for. Tasha, do you think dating is hard? I think dating is very hard. I do and too. I do too. Me. <laughs> I just have a simple answer. Yes, it's so freaking hard. It's hard. And I, I mean, don't care. And I'm finding, Tasia, I don't care if you're younger, older, black, white. I just think it's hard. But it's, go ahead. Hi, I dated 20 guys at once. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Okay. And I'm just going to say, like, I find it very hard. Yes, I do know what I offer. Yes, I do know what I deserve. Yes, I know that I've been working on myself and my standard is up here. But at the same time, I'm also a hopeless romantic. So it really, yes, I agree with you, Drew. It depends where you are in life to really decipher if dating is hard or not. I'm sorry. I don't want to go on a million dates to find my guy. It's hard. I don't want to do it. So yeah. I know, I, uh, Matthew, I always say this, you know, I only want one. It's not like I'm looking for, like Tasia, I don't want to date 20 guys at the same time. I only want one. And I'm wondering, is it, do you think that it's hard or is it something that women and men too, because I hear the same thing from, from men as well. Do you think it's something we're not doing correctly? It is undoubtedly hard. hard. And wait, the Matthew, same... before you continue, let's all say congratulations to Matthew before Yay. we sign this call. Yay. And tell us that he had gotten engaged. So congrats, congrats, congrats. Well, I, I thank you for that. And this is actually the first time I've been in public, as it were, as an engaged person. So it's uh, I couldn't ask for better company for that. It is in, it's undoubtedly very, very hard. The pressure valve is actually in what you just said, Gail, which is that we only need one. Yes. And, and the numbers may be even stacked against us, but if you imagine a game of baseball where you have as many at-bats as you want and you only actually need to hit the ball once, yeah, that's, those are actually still good odds because you can keep trying. And... I try to remind people of that when they're complaining about what men are like or what women are like or what anybody is like. I try to remind, remind people that it actually doesn't really matter to you as an individual what the average is like because you're not looking for the average. Mm. You're looking for that person who's going to come along and build something really amazing with you. Now, I also think that even though dating is hard, people make it 10 times harder than it needs to be. <laughs> Why? How? 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 Well, I think one of the biggest ways we do it is by valuing the wrong things. So I, 15 years ago now, when I started, I had this metaphor that, you know, women who were saying, I don't want to make the move on a guy. I'm old fashioned. I would be like, then you don't know what old fashioned is because old fashioned <laughs> would have been a woman walking past a guy, dropping her handkerchief, and then she'd keep walking and the guy would see the handkerchief and he'd think this is an extraordinary opportunity to be a man. And he'd pick it up 
he'd walk it over to her and he'd say, Madam, you dropped this. And she'd say, did I? And they'd now have a conversation, a conversation that he thought was his idea, but she dropped the handkerchief in front of him. In other words, she chose him. Now that was really great because what it did was it got an entire world of women who never made the move to realize, oh, I can be proactive. I can be empowered. I just need to learn how to drop the handkerchief in the modern era. Yeah. It doesn't mean I have to chase. It just means I need to know how to select who yeah. I want attention from. Now, the dangerous part and the part that it took me several years after that to realize is that if we're not paying attention to the character of the person who picks up the handkerchief once we get talking to them, we can get ourselves in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And where I say people make dating harder than it needs to be is we can get locked in months long or years long, we sometimes can't even call them relationships, situationships mm -hmm. with someone who isn't giving us what we want because we're valuing attention yeah. and mistaking it for intention or we're mistaking intention for actual investment but just because you're in just because you have the intention of showing up it doesn't mean you can yeah. deliver no you know what i like is that both of you uh, the two experts who are joining us today both of you say it's okay for the women to make for the woman to make the first move that's okay i totally agree with that i'm just trying to figure out to find someone to make the first move on but logan and listen to this, Drew and Tasha, because Logan, you say there are three uh, dating tendencies. Can you just click them off, off for us? One, two, three. Sure. Yes. And I think I know what two of the people on here are. So the first one is the romanticizer. And this is the person who loves love. They're looking for the soulmate. They have a vision of what this person looks like. It'll happen and when it happens. It'll happen when it happens. <laughs> and I'll know it when I see it. And yeah. if it, feels easy, then it's right. And if it feels hard, it must be the wrong relationship because if it were my soulmate, it would be effortless. That's the second one, one the romanticizer. Yeah. Okay. Second one is the maximizer. And I see a lot of these people where I live in Silicon Valley and they are always trying to optimize for the best person. So they say, I like this girl, but could she be 5% more interesting? Could she be 10% more attractive? And it's always like, I just research my way to the right answer. And it's kind of like trading up or grass is always greener. So there's a feeling of, I just haven't met the right person right, yet. Yeah. And I have to keep looking. And they're holding and then, out for the right person, even holding out for the right person. Lovely in front. Okay. And number yeah, three. there's some, there's some view of like, it's about the perfect person. And once I find them, and then the number three is the hesitator. And this is the person who's not dating at all. They think I'm just not lovable yet. I'll be lovable when I lose weight. I'll be lovable when I clean my apartment. And so there's always a dot, 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 then I'll date. When in reality, no one's ever 100% ready to date. You just have to get out there, learn your type, learn who makes you happy, get better at dating. And so during the pandemic, a lot of people have used the pandemic as an excuse to not date. And so I'm hearing from many hesitators right now. Yeah, you said great relationships are built. They are not discovered. So guys, when you hear those three types, do <laughs> any of those three types resonate with you? Because I definitely, when you said romanticizer, I definitely thought that's me. And Tasha, you said something interesting that you are a hopeless romantic. I describe myself as that too. And I just interviewed Jennifer Lopez the other day for the movie, Marry Me, that's coming out. And I said, you're just a hopeless romantic. She said, no, I'm a hopeful romantic. Ooh. Isn't that good? Really that's good. Really so good. good. So do any, and I said, yeah, that's what I am, Jennifer. I'm a hopeful romantic. <laughs> so do any of those three types resonate, Drew, with you or resonate with you, Tasha? I had thoughts because I'm like, ooh, a hesitator can be like a self-doubter. What I've come to realize is at nearly 47 years old is that I, I, I may not know what's going to happen um, and I'm actually okay with mm -hmm. that. And when I look at the two toothbrushes, which is so weird, I don't know why baseball and like toothbrushes, why these famous societal <laughs> metaphors are so <laughs> applicable, um, yeah. but why is the toothbrush such, such a thing? It is. Um, yeah. And um, I, I always thought that love would define me. Um, and I, I think I'm lucky because I have two children that I do. And I loved when you said we are born with the ability to love. Yes. And it is so true. 
Um, and I, I love these two girls. I've just never been at a place where I, and I do think dating is hard and I am a hopeful romantic, but I'm also coming at it for the first time knowing I will be okay no matter what. Yes. yes. And that's a place I've never dated from. Yeah, that's very freeing to feel mm -hmm. that. Tasha, mm -hmm. do you do any of those three categories resonate with you? I definitely, just like you, I romanticize, but also is there like a way to romanticize and also be practical? Like yes. I feel yeah. like yeah. I, I'm not asking for too much. I'm not so far in like la la land in the fantasy world to where it's just like, okay, relax. This is not, you're not Cinderella, but um, I don't think like <laughs> what I'm asking is too much. And I've actually worked really hard on who I am. And I know that I feel like the right guy would come and approach me, but I love, 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 love Matthew saying that how like back then she would drop her handkerchief mm -hmm. and the guy thought it was his idea. Cause it's kind of true. We know what we want. Mm -hmm. Essentially. We know if a guy comes up to you, you do know, like I'm interested or I'm not interested. So I feel like, yes, we always kind of like look at a bar. Like I wish a guy would just walk up to me right now, but have the time. If a guy walks up to you, in fact, I just did it three days ago. I'm just like, thank you. Like I'm good. Matthew, do you think women in general are too picky? Because I love in Logan's book, she says, when you ask women the characteristics they want, very seldom do they say emotional stability or kindness. We'll list health, we'll, we'll list height requirements, six, four. We'll list height <laughs> requirements. We'll list what we'd like, the, the type of personality, but we don't say emotional stability. And when you come to a relationship, that really is one of the most important things is emotional stability. Definitely kindness is very high on my list. Do you think sometimes that women in the dating world are just too damn picky? We get picky about the wrong things. Uh, mm. And we should be ultra, ultra, ultra picky about the right things. Uh, when it comes to teamwork, when it comes to kindness, when it comes to someone who can say sorry, when yeah. it comes to someone who argues well, we're all going to argue, but can we be with someone who argues well? Um, we're all going to be with someone who's imperfect and makes mistakes. We're all going to be with someone who acts out at times. Um, but do they trend in the right direction? You know, are they improving? Are we improving with them? Is it making us a better version of ourselves? These are things to be picky about. But we do tend to get picky about things that aren't actually going to make us happy in the long run. Mm. Social media has taught us to be maximizers, to use your term, Logan. Um, we have so much to compare, not just ourselves to, but the person we're dating to. And we're not comparing them to a real thing. We're comparing them to a standard of beauty that has been curated and optimized and photoshopped that doesn't really exist. We're comparing their life to the exciting life of other people's highlight reels. We're comparing how we should, we think we should feel on a date or in a relationship with how everyone else is saying they feel mm. on a date or in a relationship. And so for a lot of people, real life doesn't feel like enough at the end of that. Yeah. So yeah. we keep optimizing beyond, you know, if I can just get this thing as well, that's going to make me happy. And at a certain point, once you've got the fundamentals of a great partner, optimize further optimizing based on upgrading the partner isn't where the point of leverage is. It's investing in the thing to make it great. As you said, Logan, great relationships aren't found, they're built. I would add maybe a fourth category to the romanticizer, the maximizer, and the hesitator, which is the junkie. The, <laughs> what is that, the, Matthew? The junkie is, is the person who is just addicted to the feelings of being mm -hmm. wanted, the feelings of being in love, the excitement of dating. And a great relationship is more like a healthy diet. It's not like... It's not always as fun as a pizza, but pizza is not going to make you happy if all you eat is pizza. There's a, there is a junky mindset that people have to dating. And there's a kind of a graduation that has to occur for someone to say, I'm actually going to be in this relationship, choose it, enjoy it. And I'm going to actually put the blinkers on. Yeah. for the rest of the world, yeah. because my FOMO about everything else, I can't, firstly, I can't experience everything all the time. It's not possible. You can't enjoy your vacation in India and also enjoy Turkey at the same time. 
it's not possible. You have to be on the vacation you're on. And that's the yes. same with relationships, but the junkie can never be where they are. They're always chasing some high that's on the outside of where they are. Yeah, I'm definitely not. I'm, I'm proud to say I'm definitely not a junkie <laughs> about anything. But Logan, you say this, you, you know, many women are nitpicking about the wrong things. Focus on the positive, the, the things that do work. Focus on the positive. And I thought it was interesting when Tasha said a guy came up and she said, no, no, thanks. You, you both say, say yes to everything. And number two, go on a second date, even if you didn't think the first date was great. And that's not something I've ever done. If I didn't think the first date was great, I'm thinking, I ain't going to be a second. And you're thinking that's the wrong attitude. Why? So you're having your real experience with ups and downs and you're comparing it to somebody, which is all the exciting in filtered multicolor highlight reel. And so I think that this has trained us to think that the first date is going to be instant fireworks. And so I've had this experience so many times where I am working with a male client. He'll come over. He'll say, I met this guy. He was really handsome. He took me to a nice place. Um, we had a good conversation. I'm not going to see him again. And I'll say, what are you talking about? And he'll say, I just didn't feel the spark. And so our society has become really obsessed with this idea of the spark. And it's not that there is no such thing as the spark. It's that you don't necessarily feel it right away on the first date. And the kind of person who gives you the spark, that's a very particular type of person. And so what I found, there's been this conversation in our culture lately about love bombing. And love bombing is, I think, another way of saying the junkie, what, what Matthew called the junkie, which is addicted to making someone fall in love with them. Um, loves that early romance and seduction, isn't necessarily in it for the long term. And so what I see is that people say, if I don't feel chemistry on the first date, I'm out. Whereas I feel like some of the best people in my life, the strongest, most compassionate, kindest, loyalist people, they're not sparky. It takes some time to get to know them. Like, think about who you want on your team. Do they all need to be the superstar? No, I feel like my husband is such a good partner to me. Like, whatever I say to him, I feel like he's there for me. He's my teammate. He's not the sparkiest person. He's an introverted scientist that studies machine learning, right? Like, and, and so you it's said, like, and you said he's a that. vegan. <laughs> he's a vegan. He's <laughs> and vegan and he's redheaded. Like, yes, and he's redheaded. Yeah. Yeah, and I like, Logan, you say, I you do say love don't red go hair. for the spark, <laughs> go for the slow burn. I confess, yes. I, I, I always yes. think I have been looking for the spark. Drew and Tasia, have you all been looking for the spark? I'm not saying it has to be first date, but I'd like to think there's spark potential. And you're saying <laughs> that's, the, that's the wrong way to look at Drew. The, you been yeah, the sparking the spark? Grow. Yeah. Well, I, I like the slow burn. Look for the slow burn. I like that. I agree. I think the hardest part for me about dating is the virtual. We're moving into a metaverse. The pandemic pushed us further into dating apps and online. Mark Zuckerberg at one point said, I think we should say if we're single or not single, which changed all of our behavior to say, I no longer have to IRL approach this. I can live with my insecurities behind a firewall and I don't have to be brave anymore. And it really screwed us up. And I find the behavior of people so unaccountable in the dating app world. And two years ago, I was begging Gail to get on a dating app. And two mm -hmm. years later, I'm like, I am not saying that anymore because I need a break. I don't, and I do take breaks. I don't binge it. I'm not a junkie. I dip in, I go, oh my God, no wonder nobody's doing this in real life. Everybody's here. Okay. <laughs> I've got the memo. It's like shooting fish and barrel. It's so more easy. and more people though, Drew, are meeting on dating apps. It's true. More and more people. That's how they're doing it. And we should have those success, success. stories. Yes. Otherwise, it's too depressing. However, for those of us who are wanting the slow burn or even a chance to meet in person, yes. I can't tell you how many people I don't even meet off a dating app. You have a really weird quippy exchange and it usually fizzles into nothing. So to even get to that spark or slow burn has been the most challenging thing. Yeah. I mean, what about you, Tasia, in terms of a spark or a, are, are you a, are you a person who looks for the spark? And if personally, so, stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, personally, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. um, number one, well, because I've, I've even been married before. So, and that honestly, that was a slow burn. And I feel like I developed a love for him 
over a period of time. And so it's not something that usually if it's a spark, it's something that's more like lustful and something that's just like probably a bad boy in a way. So, and that's kind of like not something that's going to last a long time. So no, I'm not a spark type of person, but also I'm very hesitant to be on a dating app for exactly what Drew was just saying. It does take a long time to finally get that date. I feel like so many of my girlfriends are chatting with somebody for like one to two months and then doesn't even transpire to anything because well, number one, you don't really have to. And they're probably talking to 10 other people. I love that both Matthew and Logan say it's fine because I was raised by a mom that said a woman never makes a first move. That's just not done. <laughs> and that just never made any sense to me, I have to say. Never made any sense to me. So I'm, I'm happy that you guys are thinking it's 2022. It's been this way for a long time. It's okay. And I don't like playing games. I don't want to be cute. I don't want to call you back just because I don't want you to think I'm too ain't too excited. I, I just, I, I don't feel like playing games, but Drew, I love something that you did recently. And I think that I thought it was bold. I thought it was brave. And I want you to share what you did. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was in Central Park um, and because of my dating app fatigue, and again, I'm not a binger. I'm not on them all the yeah. time. I go in and out, um, but I decided to, I saw a man who I think, um, I don't know if that's your what eye. the spark yes. is, the pupils yeah. dilated. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I, I, I found him attractive, which I wonder is that chemistry, but I, I saw this man and I followed him. And as park. someone who gets followed, I don't think it's the great. Wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I kind of love him. the story. Keep going. Yeah. What, if our, what if our eyes met? What mm -hmm. would happen then? And then he sort of went to the side and he was just dilly dallying. And so our eyes weren't meeting naturally. So I just went in and I said, excuse me, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I saw you and I felt compelled to come up and ask you um, a question. Is that okay? And he said, yes. And I said, are you single? And he said, perhaps. And I said, okay, that's not a no. Um, are you gay? And he goes, no. I said, I only ask because I tend to bark up the wrong tree. So sorry about that. Um, and I said, oh gosh, I, I'm almost so shy now that I've done this. I don't know what to say. And I'm the person who took you aside to in initiate a conversation. I was also wearing a, a full face mask. <laughs> I said, let me, and I pulled it off and I said, hi, nice to meet you. Um, and we got to talking. I love that she did that, guys. So I want to know, Matthew, I love that. Matthew, I want to know what you think about that tactic, because I mm. swear to you, if I saw it, I, I now think I would try that. I was in the airport the other day. You know, you're just passing someone. I turned around, he turned around, but I was rushing for my flight. So there was nothing I could do. But I thought, God, I would have tried Drew's move just to say, hey. <laughs> but anyway. Do you think that do you think that we should say anyone who's dating should they say up front on their first date what they're looking for and what do you think about Drew's move in Central Park? Uh, so much to say about all of that. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I love, I, I absolutely love it first and foremost yeah. because we go through life killing our chances by overthinking everything we do. Yes, and. The fact that Drew did something instead of nothing, it's binary. It Something is always better than nothing because someone could always be looking at you and second guessing themselves and hoping that you'd give them some kind of green light that it would be okay to talk to you. And so let's not discount the importance of chemistry. Yeah. The danger of chemistry is that we take it too far. We, we make it a substitute for all of the other things we need and, ex and an excuse for why we tolerate all the wrong behavior. So chemistry is super important. Drew felt something. Now the dangerous part is the longer Drew thinks about that guy, the longer she makes up a story about him that's not necessarily real. <laughs> and the story is what makes us so nervous and then has us not knowing what to say or wanting to impress or wanting to please. 
because the story has made it important before it actually should be important. Yeah. Now, to your second question, Gail, on the date, people can be upfront about what it is they're looking for. What we mustn't do is make that directly associated with the person in front of us. So a nice way of doing this is called pre-framing. You could be on a date and say, you know, it's fun. Like in casual conversation, you're just talking abstract, philosophical, your yeah. views. You say, you know, a lot of my friends, they kind of jump from one casual fling to the next and they kind of seem to be happy doing that. I feel like I don't understand that because for me, it's all about meaningful connections. I like that. I, Logan, you also, I really like that, Matthew, a lot. Logan, you say uh, women people should look for a life partner, not a prom date. The difference between the two, you mean what? Who did you want to go to prom with? So for me, you know, someone who looks good in pictures, you can dance the night with, maybe you hook up with them at the end of the night. You're not thinking about their long-term partnership potential. You're in high school and you're having a good time. And I think that's completely fine for a prom date. But at a certain age, I think that your criteria need to develop past that. And you need to think more about, um, you, need, you need to think beyond that initial chemistry and prom date qualities. And so what is a life partner? A life partner is someone who is reliable, they're trustworthy, they're kind, they're emotionally stable. You can make hard decisions with them. A, pro, a life partner is really somebody that you can build a life with. And so you can have a lot of love stories with different people, but there are fewer people with whom you can have a life story. Listen, you know, I used to think, I used to believe in Prince Charming and fairy tales. I'm happy to say I don't. Logan says, A, Prince Charming doesn't exist. And if he did, he probably would have morning breath. So what you need to do, women, is look for <laughs> someone named Larry, who's like a good life partner who would hold your purse when you need to, who's with you through thick and thin. I so agree with that. So Tasia, I want to know from you, what type, what are you looking for in a partner? Because I don't, I do not think of us as whiny women who are just sitting here going, oh, woe is me, woe is me. I ain't got nobody. I don't want it to be that conversation. What I do want is for people to understand that it can be difficult. I'm willing to play. I'm willing to play, willing to work. Because Logan says, you have to think of it as work. It, it takes work, but don't treat it like work. So I wanted to hear from you, Tasia. You know, for me, I feel like I'm right now, especially I'm looking for, well, I can't say I'm actually looking right now because I'm newly single. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm ready for all of that quite yet. But for my next person, I will definitely say I want that person to have some sort of experience because to me, working in a relationship is something that a lot of people say that they're willing to do, but don't actually do it. They want the easy, the high road. They don't want to fight. They don't want to do this, do that. Um, and so for me right now, I'm looking for someone that's willing to fight for a really good relationship. And it doesn't have to be brawling. We don't need to be fighting every single day, but they're willing yeah. to work for it. Yes. I thought Matthew said something interesting. If fighting is okay, you just want to fight well. There is a difference. Mm -hmm. Drew, and there's a big difference. It's a huge <laughs> difference. It's, fighting, I think, is actually healthy. You just want to fight well. Uh, Drew, do you think it's harder with, with children? Because your children are young. They're not little bitty kids, but they're young. Nope. And I wasn't willing to date for many years. Um, this wow. is like only I'm sort of six years now, like the last few years I've been, oh, but here's the thing. <laughs> I think that also we, we lose sight of, and part of my frustration with the apps is, um, and I've learned one thing I'd like to share with everyone that apparently I am the class clown idiot who didn't know this. Don't meet people for a meal, meet them for tea or a drink. <laughs> Matthew, why did I not know this? I have I locked myself that. into more awkward meals. I, I didn't know that either. Why? Hey, what do you mean? I'm explain. I'm confused. Because I why? thought I thought lunch was good and I thought dinner was good until <laughs> Matthew on Thursday said, flirt and go on shorter dates. I thought a dinner was good. I even thought well, I think I, I think that we all have we all have a limited amount of time and energy and yeah. it, you know it doesn't it doesn't matter if you have evenings free if you're burnt out all the time um, and dating can easily burn people out. I think that before even going on a short date, you should have a short phone call or a short FaceTime, something that allows you to see if there is just a hair of 
chemistry, chemistry if there yeah. is a bit of banter between you if there's just something where you go oh I, I i feel something um and that's not to say you have to be so judgmental on that that you don't go on any dates because you rule everyone out at that point but you also get to see if someone's serious at that point because if they won't get on the phone or if they won't have a facetime with you what's the likelihood of ever reaching a date anyway and then when you go on a date i you know, our evenings are precious. Most of us are exhausted by the time yeah. we finish the day. We all work hard. Yeah. We've, we've just about got the energy to watch our favorite TV show before falling yeah. asleep, let alone go on a date with a stranger we don't even know we like yet. Yeah. So yeah. that, you know, for me, a quick coffee, a quick, like, let's grab a coffee and walk in the park near where we work. Mm -hmm. Something like that is just so low investment but it allows us to see if we want to see each other again without committing a very awkward evening to dinner. And mm -hmm. let's face okay. it, when you don't know someone sitting across, this, this is the other thing about dinner dates. When you're sat across the table from someone facing them, it's just about the worst body language possible oh, for building connection. Yeah, we talked about this. Logan, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Logan says. Logan says, yeah. and I wrote this down. Logan says, Never sit across, sit next to each other. Why, Logan? It's too much like a job interview. It's it's yeah. too hard. You're focused on the other person. There's all this cool research that says when you're making direct eye contact, it's actually harder to think. And that's why sometimes when you have to have a tough conversation with someone, go on a drive with them because actually looking out at the world instead of looking at them, it makes it easier to think, easier to talk, easier to have a heart to heart. For parents listening, that's a major thing too. Take your kids on a drive and they'll tell you what's going on at school. Oh my God. I just got so excited. My entire laptop. I, I think it's like the magnetic pulse. That is such a hot tip. Really? Yes, I mean, that, I thought so too. Profoundly yeah. useful. Staring at each other, job interview, work with your yeah. kids, eye yeah. contact. Also, yeah. Matthew, it's so true. I can't tell you. I've sat, I've had a few instances where I literally met the person when the few dates that did show up and I was like, <laughs> oh no, immediately it was a no. And then I'm like, they're like, would you like to order a drink little in the appetizer that they order two, five courses? I'm like, oh, this is hell. Um, so yeah. Want, like, no, no, Drew, Drew, I've been on dates where I've said to the waiter when he wasn't looking, could you please bring the check? <laughs> totally. You know, I try to get his attention to go check. Without letting them see, so, it's Matthew, so awkward. You're but dating, something, Matthew. But dating is fun and there are stories. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I think that we should never lose sight of how exciting it is yes. when I'm getting ready to go on a date. Yes. That could rival the date. The oh yeah. The hope, the projection, the the excuse to get dressed. Um and and yet I do relate to what Matthew's saying, like let's be cautious. We don't have a lot of time or energy. So how do we set ourselves up for success? How do we mm -hmm. produce it in a right way, but never lose sight of how excited we are to yeah. go out there and execute what we're setting up. And you know what, if it doesn't work out, you try again and nothing should ever stop you from believing in the possibilities and, or use it as an excuse to doubt yourself or to doubt other people. Nobody's behavior can be taken out on someone else or, oh God, this person screwed me over. So I hope that next person doesn't screw wow. me over. Don't project, yes. Yes. just mm -hmm. be mature and give everything a clean slate yes. and enjoy it. Yes, Drew, I think I, I, I resonate with everything you're saying. I give everybody, I don't wanna hold any past things that I've been through. I give every mm -hmm. everybody, everybody the benefit of the doubt until you give me a reason not to. I stay open to all possibilities. I think that's a beautiful way to end. I love what you just said. You guys were so fantastic. Drew, I'm going to Central Park. Tasia, Matthew, Logan, we thank you for your time for our Oprah Insider Roundtable. I thought this was a lot of fun. Really, really appreciate your time today. Visit OprahDaily.com to stay up to date with all of our live events. Let us know who you want to see what you want to hear, what you want to talk about on our next roundtable. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.